Good morning, everyone. My name is Udyan Jain. I'm a part of EDX development team. Firstly, before starting, I would like to uh, give my sincere thanks to Professor D.B. Fatak, our project mentor, and Mr. Nagesh Karmali, our project in charge. Now, let me introduce you with my team. Gagan, Piyush, Rupal, Sonam, Sohant, Surbhi, and Zeel. Now, the topics which I would be covering in this presentation, I described here, I will be covering, we will be covering a bit introduction about the platform and some of the demonstration, what we have developed in last two months. What is EDX? EDX is a non-profit organization which is a collaboration of MIT and Harvard. The EDX was developed last year. Now, they have released the code in open source. And the open source platform is known as Open EDX. In the last two months, we have built a MOOC prototype named as IIT Bombay X, built on ED Open EDX platform. This is the overall overview of the EDX. There are various parts. One is the LMS part, which is learning management system. Other one is the CMS, course management system. This is the discussion forum on which the student and the teacher can discuss. The other part is the grading part, in which the external grading will be done regarding open response assessment or any other essay type questions. Now, what is CMS? Course Management System. It is also known as Studio. Now, this will be the instructor site where the instructor can create courses, can create different events and upload videos related to the course. Now, the features of SMS, CMS. The features of CMS is the one of the major, major features is adding videos. On EDX platform, there is a uh, condition that you, the instructor has to go to YouTube, upload a video, and then fetch a ID and put it here. But what we have done here, we have directly added a button that is upload directly to YouTube. The instructor can directly click on that button, a new page will open, he can fill his credentials and upload that video, and he will get that ID. There is no need to go to the YouTube, then upload it, get an ID, and Put it here. Next. The, this is uh, the editing part of the uh, video if you want to add some of the uh, attributes of it. Next. Now, course team. The, student, the instructor can also add other team members in his course as his course team. Like if he is authoring a course and he wants a team of 5 or 10, there is no upper limitation on this. So, he can add in it. Next is the grading policy. The, the grading policy by default is pass or fail. It is a scale. Like above 50, it is pass. Below 50, it is fail. Now, if a, if a teacher wants to divide the grades into four parts, A, B, C, D, so you just have to click on this plus button sign, and the grade will be divided. It is You can drag and drop it. Means you can extend the limit, like 30, 40. So you can extend it. The instructor can also define the grace period for the student. Like if I have. If the instructor has created any assignment and he wants the students to submit it in two hours or in three hours, so you can define the grace period here. Whenever the assignment will be online, so from that time the grace period will be started or the deadline. Assignments, the major and the most important part of any course. The instructor can define various kind of problems. The various problems are these. There are some of the basic problems are also included like multiple choice questions, text input, single word answer, and the advanced problems like you can add a circuit defining your uh, questions. You can, we can also add some of the uh, Python evaluated input questions also we can add. We can add various kind of image input questions also. So these are the advanced questions which the instructor can add in his assignment. Now, what is LMS, learning management system? It is the student side of the system where the student has to register himself. Where after registering, he can view the courses, search the courses based on his field, and can enroll himself. After the successful completion of a particular course, he will be awarded a grade or a certificate based on whether he is pass or fail, as the instructor will decide. Now, the basic features of LMS are self-paced learning. The student can watch the videos n number of times he want to watch. The most important feature of uh, the watching videos is that, there is, you can see, there is a subtitle. 
going in the side. So if I want to watch a particular part of the video, not the whole video, he can directly click on that subtitle and the video will start from there only. So this is the major important feature of it. Next. This is the student dashboard. We have added one feature here. Like you have seen here, area of interest. It is mentioned computer science. First, what it is there, where in the EDX platform, when you register, they never ask you your recommended field or area of interest. What we have done, we will ask the user at the time of registration, what is the area of interest? And on that area of interest, there will be courses shown to him, like recommended courses. Only those courses in which he is not enrolled. Already there are two courses of computer science and on both he is enrolled. So there is no courses showing now. This is the discussion part, where all the discussion will be done between the student, teacher, and he, the student can add various kind of posts, can search based on the date, votes, comments. Now, Django Cache system will be explained with my Swan. Good morning, one and all. Uh, as Udyan spoke about EDX platform, uh, basically EDX platform is uh, built on Django, and Django is a, a web framework which follows model view controller pattern. And it has a wide number of features, and major feature is that it has a good cache system. So I'm going to speak about Django, Django cache system. The main features of Django cache system, it is very robust cache system, and it saves dynamic web pages. And the major feature is that it supports levels of cache granularity. What I meant by cache granularity is that you can cache a part of a web page, a view, a part of a template, etc. These are the types of caching which are provided by Django platform. We'll go one by one. First comes the memcache. Memcache, basically what happens, uh, a part of RAM is allocated for just for caching purpose. And the main advantages why they use memcache is that it can run on multiple servers. And many popular websites like Facebook, YouTube, Wikipedia uses memcache. Next comes the database caching. Database caching where uh, there's a table created at the back end, and then the table is used for caching. That uh, advantages of database caching, there can be multiple databases used. If there are suppose read requests, cache read requests, cache write requests, there can be a cache router which manages read requests separately and write requests separately. And disadvantages, uh, uh, multi managing multiple databases is difficult. And there is a problem of SQL parsing. I mean, you have to check the syntax of uh, SQL. Next comes the file system caching, where the cache content is stored in particular folder on the file system. By default, it is stored in slash var slash tmp folder. And user should give read and write permissions to the directory. Uh, next comes the local memory caching, where uh, you don't use an external daemon service like memcache, and cache only on your local memory. So we have done an experiment to test various cache systems available in Django. And testing tool used was JMeter, wherein you have to create a thread group and mention the parameters. So here I mentioned the example parameters, number of users as 10, ramp up period is the time in which all threads should be started, uh, that's as 20, and loop count is the iteration in which user should repeat the request, and it's as 5. And these are the results obtained using JMeter. From this you can see the preference order that memcache takes the least time and local mem memory caching takes the most time. EDX database will be explained by Gagan. Good morning everyone. Now I'll be explaining the EDX database. EDX is using actually two database systems currently. One is the SQLite database, that is the relational one. It is used to store the user data, user information, and other is the MongoDB database, which is a non-relational database just to use the uh, course content. But actually when you uh, use it for the production environment, uh, SQLite is re being re replaced by MySQL. In the SQLite database, uh, it, as it is a relational database, it is using user profile, uh, storing user profile, registration data, and course enrollment data, and test and grading data all together. Actually, in IIT Bombay X, there are 86 tables, 85 being of the EDX platform itself, one we have added while the development. This is the categorization of tables in the EDX platform. Uh, as you can see on the left part, uh, user and group information, which is, which is including most of the Django legacy database tables. And on the right part, the course enrollment tables are there, in which the data about course, enrolling uh, course enrollment is stored up with the student ID. MongoDB database is used for storing the courseware content. It is a NoSQL no database, which is document-based. So it has no predefined schema like in relational databases. There, 
there is no schema for relations. You can uh, modify according to your need. So it is used to store the course policies, courseware content, and uh, actually in, it has a unique feature, MongoDB. It stores uh, data as key value pairs, which, is, uh, which helps in optimizing the retrieval and appending of data in the MongoDB. Uh, in EDX platform, there are two MongoDB databases, xContent and xModule. xContent stores the file system content. xModule stores the metadata. The use of two database systems comes into role because uh, previously, uh, because uh, previously MongoDB was not being used. Uh, XML file system was being used, and it has been tra uh, transition has been done to MongoDB. But the relational database pre-existed, pre so they have not transited uh, that to MongoDB. Now, EDX Aura will be explained by Surbhi. Uh, I'll be covering next three sections: that's EDX Aura, XQ, and Ease. Now, coming to talk about any MOOC, one of the important thing that is to be covered is assignment. So uh, in our IITBX, uh, apart from the general multiple type questions and objective questions, we have a uh, provision for open response questions. Uh, Aura is used for correct, uh, correcting those, grading those open response questions. Uh, it, has, uh, it supports three types of grading, peer, staff, and machine. Next. Uh, this is the basic flow which will explain how the interaction is done. Uh, they, uh, when, when a teacher creates an assignment, he can uh, he can set which assessment is to be used or a, or a combination of these is to be used. So uh, P, uh, uh, when he creates an assignment, he also creates a set of rubric on which uh, the student, uh, uh, the student quest, uh, answer should be graded. So a self-assessment, the student grades himself on, uh, based on the rubric. Uh, peer assessment is done through a calibration round where he grades himself first and then he goes through the calibration round wherein uh, there are few, few uh, professor graded questions kept and he grades them and then uh, the result is compared and if it's found proper then only he's allowed to grade others then coming to ai uh, there's a it's still in it's a still work in progress uh, what uh, they have enhanced a little bit uh, they've made an ease ease module that's enhanced ai scoring engine which um, that i'll be covering in later chapters next Yes. Yeah, AI uh, algorithm is developed as said. Peer, first you have to grade your essays, then go to the calibration round where you grade uh, already graded essays and compare your results, and then only you can grade your uh, peers. Next. Coming to XQ, we have discussed about uh, LMS and we have discussed about EDX Aura. LMS is where you can submit your assignment and Aura will grade them. But how will these two interact? For interaction, uh, there's a component called XQ. Uh, wherein from LMS when you submit an assignment an HTTP post request is created with two URLs one from where the request is coming and uh, another is where the uh, final graded assignment is to be sent and these assignments as the name suggests XQ it's handled in a queue so the coming results are enqueued and uh, they are dequeued when uh, the graded uh, ones are come so uh, this is the basic flow um, ease module uh, this is used for AI grading um, this can be used for both uh, numeric classifications, uh, numeric values, and free text. Next. Um, I, I tried testing ease with a set of essays. So I created a, uh, on a prompt which said that extending the uh, two-year duration of, uh, four-year duration to six-year of uh, our college and something like that. So I, I collected a set of six, around six, six essays and uh, there's a function in this which provides like you submit essays and then uh, based on anon uh, synonyms it creates additional essays. Uh, so th uh, with those essays and additional essays I tried uh, training them. Uh, what I found was the feedback was not getting generated properly uh, whereas the grading part is concerned the scores. Scores were pretty off, uh, uh, proper. Like I tried, uh, they had mentioned it, like if you give the prompt as the given uh, question as your essay, uh, it will grade it to zero. So I tried uh, giving prompt as the essay and it gave score zero. Then I tried a very uh, rough essay with, with, which was completely out of topic and it gave, it gave a less score based on grammar, grammar was proper. So, uh, but still since I did not have a very huge collection of essays for training, and testing, so uh, this still is to be done in uh, more depth. Next. This is basically how it does. Um, after creating the model, uh, it uh, 
it dumps the data into JSON file, which can be used later on for other purposes. Uh, then it selects the algorithm based on um, how uh, there are two basic two types of algorithms. It selects one of them, then uh, then it creates an SSA object and adds it to them, extracts features, get classifier, and the, this everything is done. Uh, there's a Python library called SCKIT, Scikit-Learn, uh, which already has uh, machine learning implemented. So it's using that for uh, doing. Uh, we'll go for demo, which will be given by Zeal and Pius. Uh, very good morning to all. Uh, uh, at, uh, uh, today I'm going to show the features that we have created in the EDX platform, LMS and CMS. Uh, so these all uh, four are the features. One is the YouTube that uh, Udyan told, and the second one is popularity of courses that uh, previously uh, in EDX platform uh, it was not mentioned how many students register for a particular course. So we try to uh, develop this, and the other is course search. Uh, 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 which is a uh, keyword search. You can search on various keywords and other is recommended courses that uh, depending on the student's area of interest. So I will show the demo. Uh, this is the This is the LMS thing after the, the students are logged in, which, uh, which will show the, uh, the courses that, uh, uh, that he has enrolled and the here area of interest are there. So if I edit the area of interest, right now it is computer science, so two courses uh, are shown. If I edit the area of interest, say humanity, uh, uh, humanity then uh, it will uh, ch change the uh, courses depending on it. But uh, no server is down means we have to start the server. The uh, server is not down. Did you have a server class machine to experiment, or did you load it on your laptops and PCs only? Thing like uh, when we started with, we started with our laptops, and then uh, we later got a machine. When you tested the performance using JMeter, did you use the uh, desktop machine or the server machine? Server machine. Server machine. So, uh, if you use the normal machine, it was not showing the uh, like pre preferred results. So then I used the server machine, then results were coming fine. The issue is of determining the scalability of the software architecture. Yeah. So strictly speaking, what you should have done is you should have used first some partial resources of that server and like logically shutting down some processors or some memory and then enhance that and rerun the same test to know whether you get a better performance if you add hardware or not. That test is not yet performed. But the JMeter scripts that you have written are all there as part of your submissions? Yes sir, we submitted those reports and the we submitted, we wrote, I wrote all about in the report. So if somebody has to repeat that test, yeah, I it will be the, possible to yeah, do I that. I wrote the procedure steps and all. This uh, uh, testing of essays, by the way, is, is an extremely open-ended issue. Final answer is not given. For example, I asked Dr. Anand Agarwal when he said that essays can be evaluated. I said we have collected about 2,400 essays written by teams of about 10,000 teachers. Can they be graded? He says, of course, yes, without even asking me what the essays were about. Each essay was supposed to come up with some idea on how to use Akash effectively for education. And the education was to span everything from school education to higher education. Now, in such a situation, practically every essay, if not every essay, majority of them, each is expected to dwell upon a completely different idea. How do you evaluate that? Sir, like, 
the basic features that it it is using for evaluation uh, is like uh, given a prompt how many rela prompt related topics uh, words you've used length of the essay grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes like it's using wordnet dictionary right. so, so there's the whole point in general automatic evaluation of qualitative parameters is a very hard problem as compared to automatic hard. evaluation of quantitative parameters Grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes are all quantitative parameters. Uh, Length of essay is a, is a quantitative parameter. The creative idea, the sensibility of that idea, whether the idea is implementable or not, nothing of that sort can be yet automated. So that's okay, that's the restriction that we live in. Talking in the context of courses, uh, why do you mention YouTube? Is that the only place where the video resources are kept? So actually what they have done, when they have released the open EDX platform, so there is only one feature that at present what they have given that first the instructor has to go to YouTube and then fetch an ID there and you have to submit an ID as I have shown you in that screenshot. So they, there is a provision that you can use your own servers or you can deploy your own uh, server class uh, servers where you have stored the data. But for that you have to change the complete code. So they, uh, because there is no provision like here that the instructor can, if I'm using any server like Amazon server and I want to upload a video on Amazon server, so there is no option here. They are not providing any option there. No, no, it's not a question of option, but why do you have to, why do you say that the entire code will have to be changed? Because, sir, actually, for, means, uh, the, the, there is a, means a particular block for video component, like X modules. Agreed, yeah. but in the entire EDX, let's say they are standardized on YouTube, at how many places in the code specifically any reference to YouTube will ever come? So there you are. Um, so there is and why should it be? No, huh? we have to, but we have to change that X block which is related to the video component in which the you UV don't have to change that X block. You have to, have to modify, add, that. modify that. Now, how many lines of code do you have to change? Is the question I am asking. And it is my humble suggestion that there should not be more than 10 lines of code to be changed. Because if it is more, the code is obviously not written in a modular fashion. Yeah, just uh, here we have just appended the button code means nothing else. Uh, that we That's are just, right. Uh, How long did it take for you to do that? Uh, it take uh, at least How many lines, lines of code? 50 lines, not more than 50 that. lines. What is the total uh, lines of code of the EDX? 38 lakh six, uh, 68,700 uh, before two days. 30 lakhs. 38 lakhs 68,000 something. Uh, something. Two, days. two days ago. Yeah, two days. That is about 3.8 million lines of code. That is a lot of code. Yeah, a lot of it. And you are only five, six, seven, eight of you. Eight. So, how many lines of code you have actually been able to look at, if any? So, we would. Uh, uh, they are written in Python. Python. Have you all become experts in Python now? So how many of you knew Python before coming here? Oh, not bad. Lots of them. Is that how you picked up this project or it just incidentally happened? So we choose so Python and Django was not prerequisite. So we have to we choose learn. So Python and Django is prerequisite. So those who knew about it. How many of you had studied Django earlier? No one. No one. That was... But in general you would have studied the notion of caching. The caching that you described, how much of the caching is on server side and how much is on the client side, if any? There is a server side caching, caching and there is a client side caching. Yeah. So, is most of the caching that you mentioned is on the server side? Yes, sir. More, all, we tested on that. Uh, all of thing. that is. Server all side. of that is server side. And that helps. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any provision to uh, arbitrarily increase the memory allocated to cache? Sir, maybe inter like uh, usually you can use memcache, but there is no requirement to increase memory. Memcache basically you, you can use multiple servers with the same cache. Uh, there's a block location called in the settings file. No, no, no. The question I'm asking is slightly different. Yeah. Ordinarily, we expect on these MOOC to about one lakh students to register. Yeah. 
Suppose one million students register. Hmm. That means the number of people who would go online simultaneously, particularly during the deadlines of quizzes, will be very large. That is when your performance requirements will come up. Yeah. So during that time, if I wish to allocate larger memory to cache, for meme cache, let's say, yeah. can I or can I not do it? I mean, the configuration. So, so basically, memcache uses a Python memcache binding. Okay. So it comes as a package, Python memcache. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have, you have to change in the uh, files of memcache, then it might work. So it is basically completely anyway, based on that's something binding. that you may not have changed. Good job. Sir, how, how, we, how, if demo you, is ready. Uh, oh, demo is ready. OK, let's quickly go through it. We are getting delayed, but that's OK. We'll okay, cut down so, on the tea time. Okay. Uh, this is the, the dashboard of uh, LMS. Uh, we can, uh, uh, here are the courses that are uh, uh, registered in the LM, uh, CMS part. So if I search for uh, database, then it will show the results. Uh, I mean, it will show the uh, database course. And another feature is that uh, uh, student enroll, which uh, shows the popularity of courses. Means uh, right now it's just we have just created so. And this is the course page where all the details of uh, course is visible. And uh, other that uh, YouTube uh, feature, uh, this is the CMS part. So here 8000 port is for LMS and 8001 is for uh, CMS. Uh, so I will quickly show the YouTube upload feature. Uh, so if I want to upload a video, I have to uh, specify the details. Uh, he, uh, here I am using uh, YouTube Python uh, API for uploading uh, videos. Uh, so I have to write the uh, title and any other information. Uh, here uh, the main uh, security the thing is that uh, the all videos should be in the uh, same folder because uh, 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 it uh, requires that uh, 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 browse that uh, file API or browser don't give the whole f file path as a security case because if uh, it will give then you can uh, see all the uh, files of the computer system so it just gives the file name so uh, so to uh, use this YouTube uh, thing uh, we have to uh, put it in some particular folder so this will give the YouTube ID of uh, video it will just take one minute now we will continue with the features EDX has tried to complete the MOOC itself but there are still some features which are still left to implement like the search could be refined on the base of category search or school search there is no provision for rating the course like in terms of out of five stars or something the AI grader needs to be imp improved as you suggested the creative or qualitative analysis and also the access control to staff. All the members in the course team have equal rights. So there is no provision to add something like TAs to manage a huge course. And also a user interface to create programming assignments so that inputs and outputs could be uploaded as files could be implemented. Like for programming assignments, they have provided a sandbox in which you can you are supposed to run the program. But to make it more easy, I need to, we need to provide an interface such that you can upload an input file and output file so that it can be compared. And these are the references and our team. Thank you.